welcome to the fresh new episode of dynamic ciso talk show uh, this is where we get uh, security practitioners industry leaders and technology experts to share their opinion share their knowledge share their wisdom with um, the larger community uh, now before uh, i start uh, the the discussion with our guests today um, i i want to set up the context for this particular episode uh, because this is in the run up to our ninth annual uh, ciso summit which is round the corner uh, going to happen uh, within uh, next one week's time and therefore this conversation also holds a great deal of significance um the topic for this conversation is also very invigorating and it's very interesting not only interesting it's very meaningful in today's context which is zero trust in a cloud native world as i said i will i will bring in my experts uh in a couple of minutes i thought let me spend a couple of minutes to set up the context for today's conversation so if we look at some of the recent uh, developments and also reports by some uh credible sources uh you know for example idc in its recent future scape report uh has predicted that by 2024 in response to the uh, performance security and compliance requirements 40% of indian organizations uh will implement dedicated cloud services either on prem or in a service provider facility uh this is one among the top 10 predictions for the indian cloud market in the said report similarly uh by 2026 50% as many as 50% of indian organizations will be using software and cloud based infrastructure uh to create a 35% increase in sustainable efficiencies across workloads and data centers now some of these things that i am talking about uh are quite futuristic uh having said that we have in the past seen how predictions have become real and in certain cases have also surpassed um uh, those 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 numbers and and figures uh if we talk of end user expenditure on public cloud so according to gartner uh, which is one of the most um uh credible source of information when it comes to data India is forecast to spend a uh, a total of about 7.3 billion dollars in 2022 which is an increase of almost 30% from last year uh among the top areas of investment will be infrastructure as a service which is a no brainer uh, where most indian technology leaders uh are supposed to focus uh this segment is forecast uh, to total 2.4 billion in 2022 uh, which is up 40% from 2021 uh the simple reason behind this exponential growth is the rise in adoption of cloud native technologies uh most applications and workloads have either already begun or will soon begin using uh containers and microservices along with the usage of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in other words if i can say so the future is going to be based on cloud first or cloud native approach now where is the challenge here this is a very nice picture about the cloud adoption and the rising cloud usage in india where do, where does the challenge lie um while more businesses have a proven case to migrate to the cloud and reconstruct their stack and processes uh to take full advantage of it uh it may it, it makes old ways of securing systems and data up absolutely um out of order up op- obsolete um so if we are using the traditional ways to protect data assets in the cloud i think that's where we are going wrong and what does it mean it means that strengthening the perimeter and keep it guarded from the bad actors is something that we need to um look at with a fresh perspective um with the perimeter vanishing fast this approach that we are currently in or have been using in the past is almost redundant uh now with the cloud native distributed architecture there, there there is no defined space where data is kept or stored 
similar to how cloud native approach calls uh, for a fresh approach to develop uh, the codes and software. It also needs a fresh approach uh, to secure the cloud infrastructure. Now, I wouldn't like to go too much into it. And therefore, um, you know, the, the, the reason why we are talking about zero trust uh, and zero trust in a cloud native world holds a greater degree of significance. Uh, and to discuss this, uh, I have uh, the pleasure of having with me uh, two very accomplished uh, technology leaders. Uh, let me introduce them one by one. So I have with me Josefa Motiwala, who's the Director of Systems Engineering India and SARC with Palo Alto Networks, and Mark Johnston, who's the APEC Head for Security Customer Engineering at Google Cloud. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, uh, Josefa and Mark. Welcome to both of you. How are you doing? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, thanks for having us here. Absolute pleasure to be here and be part of this uh, exciting uh, topic and exciting conversation and then discussing a few things with Mark and yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, it's great to be here and have the opportunity to talk about uh, such an important and uh, exciting topic. So I look forward to uh, the communications forward and back also with Jose as well. Absolutely. I mean, even I'm, I'm very excited to talk to both of you. Uh, and, and I have a laundry list of questions, uh, which, is, which is seemingly never ending. Um, However, let me begin with a, with a common question and concern, and I'll take uh, your views one by one on that. Um, so what, what, according to you, are your, I mean, opening thoughts, initial remarks on the cloud adoption, the growing momentum towards the cloud-first approach, and the challenges that the CXOs are facing in, in the real world? Uh, Josefa, followed by uh, Mark. Sure, I, Rahul, I think fantastic uh, question at the outset to, to kind of kickstart this. And, 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 and let's, let's take a step back and understand um, you know, why the cloud adoption figures and that you mentioned are going is because essentially uh, businesses are looking at speed. Uh, speed is the essence on which uh, they thrive. And, and that's where the agile development innovation and time to market to gain that more important edge in a highly competitive market, market landscape uh, comes into the picture, right? So what it essentially also involves is collaborating with a lot of different orgs so you can get to market faster with a lot more agility. Uh, offering, um, you know, very, very innovative. And we've seen enough in the digital tech, uh, fintechs and the digital natives of the world. Uh, never before seen products and services completely repackaging the customer service in a new way. Uh, and it's being adopted in essentially by three means. If you, if you feed the onions, right? Either you're doing a lift and shift approach, so you're taking your your uh, essential uh, EPC application and trying to figure out how do you how do you go and modernize those, or you probably are doing a, a, a cloud native or born in cloud approach, right? And it could be a, a multi cloud from that perspective. And last not the least is the hybrid approach, right? So you could have a bit of both. And a lot of organizations fall in that category. So collaborating and sandboxing between this established IT practices and cloud is where people want to drive innovation and competitive advantage. However, um, this also means that there's a high possibility of security getting sidelined in favor of speed and uh, growth targets, right? Uh, the one dialogue which comes to mind is from the movie Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So for companies to kind of um, grow, the cyber risk uh, also is kind of in this new perimeter world is closing a lot of new attack surfaces in this perimeterless world. And essentially, it, it's because of the cloud nat native nature, right? It's DevOps and CI CD nature of the application development, it's the ephemeral nature of the cloud as such. It's a very, very API led economy and architecture. And all of these uh, finally comes down to the, the biggest challenge is the lack of visibility. Right and lack of visibility to get exposure to the greater attack surface. So I think it, that's where it comes down to. I think it needs to uh, needs a very very different mindset, mind shift in the way security teams needs to function uh, with the cloud adoption. And essentially, it's a shared responsibility model in in the new world. Right. So that it needs to have a very very different vision. Right. Absolutely. I mean, a great perspective uh, to open the conversation, Josefa. Uh, uh, moving to you, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and uh, I think uh, as Effa covered, you know, the, the different functions of hybrid and multi-cloud, but you know, it's, it's a question for me of, are we going to a simpler or a more complicated space? 
Yeah. And uh, for organizations, they're looking for the advantages that cloud brings. And some of that speed is actually out of simplicity. They don't manage as much. And so there's a misunderstanding sometimes of who is responsible for what. So the shared responsibility model is something we still see needing to be explained very well. And, and understanding within that, um, you know, what are the widgets that need to be done? And this is where, you know, the, the rules haven't changed a lot, actually. What you secure on-prem, there's still certain widgets that need to be secured on cloud. Configuration management is probably the big area that we see gaps in, consistent understanding of the different teams that are now agile, developing, uh, speeding away. How do we do that while having safe guardrails? How do we control the uh, code in the way they release it outside the environments they traditionally did? These are all great questions. And then, you know, we ask this overall arching, what about zero trust, the word that we're, we're talking about at this point in time? What does that mean? Breaking down perimeters, using SaaS services, PaaS services, infrastructure as a service, combining that, going to microservices, there's a lot of services. And so <laughs> if we come back, we want to have an identity as a perimeter. Uh, and that means changing the way we operate. And so change is hard for organizations in the way they do it. Um, but Cloud providers, uh, service providers have been doing this for a long time. And the security professionals in the marketplace um, have been adopting and building their technology to help govern this. So it really is a, a collaboration and partnership uh, with the industry as well as the cloud providers to create easier integrated tool sets to manage all of those services, whether they're micro or infrastructure. No, very rightly said, and I'll stay with you uh, for, my, for my next question. And, and as you said, um, uh, you know, with all of what has happened, I will not repeat that, but uh, the perimeter, the new per identity is the new perimeter. That's where the identity has shifted. Uh, that's where the perimeter has shifted, sorry. Uh, and, and uh, you know, also very correctly said that um, the way we were guarding the data in the on-prem regime, the similar way we have to guard the data in the cloud. However, there are certain tweaks that need to happen. So uh, Mark, do you think that uh, whatever digital disruption that we are currently witnessing, has it exposed, accelerated, and introduced uh, new kinds of threats to the organization which were not visible earlier or which were not exist existing earlier? Um, how, how does it impact organizational growth and sustainability? On one hand, uh, you know, when, when, we are, when we are grappling with the complexity of safeguarding the data? I think uh, there was a normalized or traditional approach that if it was within our perimeter, um, it didn't matter kind of what happened, it was safe within that space. And when we brought it to the cloud service providers, we realized that a lot of the value that they bring is collaboration, right? For our employees to be able to operate on this information, the access and ease, access, access and ease of that meant that there was greater output and faster outcomes for the business. Yet with that came, you know, making mistakes. And also the granularity went from it's in the perimeter to who has access to it. And that really brought the access control up from the network to the, you know, the user or the identity who was doing that particular function. Um, organizations hadn't quite got there with getting the granularity they needed. So they needed more controls on top of just who's accessing it. We need to add context to that access. Where are they coming from? What time of day? What network are they accessing it from? And so by enriching this communication to the services and the way the data is stored, we're able to bring together a much more uh, integrated and much more visible control of access to data. Uh, one of the tools that we've had to employ uh, to give customers strength is the ability to tag that data and then put policies of different levels of trust on it, whether it be only accessible from the data center, only accessible from on-prem, or even accessible across the internet based on that. But how do you enforce those policies based on a role-based access or a contextual-based access? Um, Google's very fortunately been invested in zero trust for a long time. So we're able to bring out identity-based access controls, our contextual-based, what we call the beyond the corporate network uh, methodology after many years of development and uh, make that available to our customers. Yet we still need to do more in this space and educating them how they can use it 
and also how they can connect it to the existing tools they have and govern it in a multi-cloud world. That is certainly uh, a challenge. Uh, I said simplicity earlier, but now the security functions add complexity. How do we make sure we actually bring that story to a better outcome together? And how relevant is, is all of this becoming uh, in, in today's context, uh, especially what we have seen in the past couple of years, it's actually becoming very relevant. So Josefa, um, you know, now I'm coming down to brass tacks and, and we'll talk, uh, you know, absolutely about the topic that we have chosen to speak on. Uh, in the market, there seems to be no dearth of uh, OEMs and vendors offering zero trust solutions and approaches. Um, can you help us understand what does it mean by zero trust for the for the cloud, specifically for the cloud, and why would CISOs uh, need it in their cloud environments? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you started with that. And, and if you happen to Google zero trust, uh, you'll be amazed at the number of results that gets hit by everybody claiming that here's what the definition of zero trust should be, right? So, uh, so, so look here, yeah, I mean, fundamentally, the whole, the whole, whole paradigm of perimeter-based security is, is uh, you touched upon, Mark Shapur has shown very, very less effective against the threats of today. Obviously, we've seen it with the increase in attack surface and stuff like that. Uh, we need a better approach, uh, and that's where uh, this whole construct of zero trust comes in. But if you just take away the buzzword of zero trust, what we really mean underlying if you think the onions, what it really means is to establish an architecture that assumes a, a very hostile environment, right? which means that every interaction you need to double click and ensure, I wouldn't say zero trust, but I, I think that, that's a little uh, 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 an extreme word which describes it, but I would say implicit trust, right? Do away with implicit trust, A. B has the ability to continuously validate or verify you know, all the consequential digital interaction happening within, between the entities. Yeah, and see how quickly can you automate response to sort of bad things from getting worse, right? It, it just comes down to this, this three definition. So zero trust essentially is, is, is a jargon that encapsulates these ideas, right? So as far as value goes, I think you, you fundamentally you have to have a very clear and comprehensive strategy that, that guides. Um, and, and, and that is where this kind of lays down the path. Uh, if you see the recent events uh, which have thrust cybersecurity into the spotlight, I, I mean, I'm not, I won't be joking when I say it, it's it's a boardroom conversation now, right? The threat, the threat landscape has continuously evolved and intensified if you look at over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, what essentially I would say is look at it from, from three pillars in terms of user, application, and infrastructure. And how do you ensure that the main thing the underlying most valuable currency in these times, which is data, uh, uh, is, is kind of uh, increasingly, increasingly uh, less exposed. The interaction between these three pillars, users, application, and infrastructure, uh, is, is this, there's a surrounding set of uh, identities and digital service delivery being made available and questions being asked on all those parameters uh, around the interaction between these three so that your most valuable asset data is, is protected at all times. Make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, I'm now narrowing down onto, I mean, conversation is becoming very interesting and I'm, I'm now narrowing down to uh, even more minute things. So Mark, uh, you know, most of the data that we access today, data not in terms of, uh, you know, what we use in our corporates, uh, but, the, but the data on, I mean, intelligence that is being gathered from the market, that maximum enterprises uh, either already have gone multi-cloud or have a roadmap to go multi-cloud, but uh, surprisingly, not many of them uh, still feel uh, that, uh, I mean, many of them, sorry, many of them still feel that security concerns inhibits uh, their cloud initiatives. And that has strengthened, kind of strengthened the idea of adopting zero trust uh, for building a robust uh, cloud native organization or cloud native infrastructure. So the question to you is, does zero trust really promise a better security posture uh, to the increasing adoption of cloud native architecture? Um, in your, in your, I mean, now you have to get a little more prescriptive. What should be the playbook for the CISOs? Sure. Um... I look at zero trust in two particular domains, um, user to system 
and system-to-system -system interactions. These have two very different implementations of what you need to do. The user to system is about stateful interactions, understanding who, on what, with what context is accessing a particular service. And that's gonna enrich in any safety that you need to make the right decision at that point in time on what they're gonna access on the back end or the particular system or data or service. So this is really gonna help you in knowing that you're ensuring that the people who have access are coming from the right environments, devices and posture in the way that they do it. So that's the first one. Now in the back end, we have system to system interaction. And this gets a little bit harder for sure. And organizations really need to look at this as a journey in the way that they modernize their application stack and how do they make the system to system interaction secure in transport and in multi-cloud. Uh, we at Google have been massive contributors to what's something called Istio, which is the service mesh, which works with containers and can be portably worked across multiple cloud providers. So this is one area where we're raising the uh, communications for system to system interactions between containers into a mesh methodology that only lets the correct service access the other correct service using a high form of authentication and authorization, mutual TLS. So it gets very complicated very fast, but the reality is you wanna create the ability to do this in a hybrid multi-cloud environment. Uh, we run a service called Anthos that creates portability with the service mesh service offering. And then we also have a multi-cloud capability to add context to wherever your data lies, even if it's back on-prem for connecting the user to it. So it will accelerate it no matter what your workload is. Uh, to ensure one of these two with your, your future direction is being employed by the CISO, by the Chief Data Officer to protect information either from lateral movement, from a compromised environment inside and system to system, or from a front end attack, which we may be able to use that context to protect that data with the front end uh, proxy or gateway. So the system to system uh, angle is a very interesting one, and I'm sure what you have suggested uh, is a is a I mean it's a great deal of learning for the for the listeners who are who are on this program right now. Um, kind of same question, Josefa, for you, but in a very uh, worded in a different way. Um, would you like to be prescriptive or give a prescribed methodology that Palo Alto Networks suggests to the CISOs and CIOs? Uh, when it comes to implementing zero trust uh, for the cloud native architecture, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, uh, Rahul. And, and let me let me at the outset say that uh, at times I've come across conversations with CISOs and CIOs, and 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 I've seen people getting intimidated by this word. Oh, everybody is forcing me. My board tells me. My CIO tells me. My business stakeholder tells me go and implement zero trust. I don't know what to do. Where to start? Um, let me tell you one thing it's it's not an all or nothing approach right and this is where i think company hesitates to begin that journey fortunately building a zero trust architecture is far more simpler than it appears uh, because zero trust is an augmentation of your existing architecture right it does not require a complete technology overhaul no that's not what it is so it can be deployed very very iteratively uh, you know while you take advantages of the tools you have or the technology you may have or what you are essentially putting in place, especially in a cloud native world. So we use sort of a five step implementing and maintaining zero trust policy. And, and you could understand we could be anywhere in this implementation process. So let's let's get to that. Number one, define the protect service, right? This is where in this world, as I said, we need to tirelessly go and reduce that attack surface, which is not viable. In, in, well, we can't, right? We, 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 you know, I've seen people putting tons of effort, but that's, that's like chasing a, a shifting goalpost because the attack surface is always expanding. However, you should be absolutely defining what your uh, uh, you know, macro attack surface is. And, 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 and a good definition of that is DAS, which is data. Uh, you know, it could be your PII data, PCI data, application of, of the shell for custom assets. This could be your IoT devices, point of sale terminals or services. Like, DNS, Active Directory, so on and so forth, right? So first step is to define what, what that uh, crown jewels looks like. What are those protect surfaces and get your controls as close as possible to these uh, crown jewels. That's number one. Number two is map the transaction flows. The way, you know, the, the interaction moves across the network or across your cloud between these protected entities is DAS, so-called, right? And document how specific resources are interacting uh, you know, to allow you to enforce some very, very granular level of controls and, and provide you very, very contextual uh, information to, to help that. So that's number two. Number three 
that's when, when once you've done defining your your protect uh, you know your crown jewels you map the flows is then when you start putting down an architecture of zero trust right which is completely customizable not derived from a single universal design instead that architecture is constructed around that protect surface around those crown jewels uh, in terms of uh, you know you, you could you could start from a network perspective uh, from an agent firewall or you could get into the layer seven micro segmentation you could get into this the the uh, workload protection side of stuff so there are very many ways but that's where you start putting those uh, elements there and and fourth piece is once you've done that you start creating that zero trust policy and this is where my favorite uh, question here or my favorite methodology is the Kipling method right uh, and he put forth the concept of who what when where why and how in his poem six serving men and using this methodology who should be accessing resource what application is being used to access by a resource when is it being accessed where is the destination uh, as, as mark said context why why is that access the resource is trying to access within that protect surface and how how is that protect surface uh, within the specific application and once you do that the final piece in this puzzle is monitor and maintain Right. This is where the final steps of reviewing all the logs real time, internal, external, all the way through from layer seven to down across the app, you know, life cycle of the application. Uh, so zero trust is a very, very interesting uh, intera iterative process. And, it, and, and that's where I think you, the organization kind of gets into this whole momentum. Great. I think, I think that's a great prescription. However, um, I mean, Mark, can I go a little off track? to ask you a question. Absolutely. Okay. I'm taking the liberty uh, with both of you, but um, you know, excellent definition and five-step process. But tell me something, um, you know, right from defining the sur surface, which includes data assets and services uh, to map the transaction flows to architecting, uh, you know, and then creating zero test policies and then monitoring. Am I right, uh, Josefa? Absolutely. So where do people go wrong? That is an excellent question, actually. And this is where it really is important. It doesn't matter how advanced the solution is. If we don't do basic hygiene, uh, it really will fall apart, right? And um, it's critical that we understand that we layer security on top of each other. And so if we forget the base layer or it's a little bit fragile, it just topples over. And uh, it, it really is important that the security posture management function is consistently applied across whatever service that you have. Um, getting that continual monitoring, best practice application of um, you know, what is the right way to deploy, what is the best uh, recommendation for the configuration of a particular data service or a particular web gateway. And um, you know, there are a lot of great industry standards out there, uh, benchmarks that allow you to apply. Uh, they go wrong when we don't apply this hygiene. We don't do the basics right. Uh, so you know, I see a lot of those mistakes being done, identity and access being one of them, over-granted privileges is still a big issue, um, not using the tools that are available because they're not aware of the native capabilities of the cloud service provider, and each one's unique. So how do I get a consistent view across that? Uh, with those foundational layers. Uh, this is where industry partnerships and technologies bring the story together to um, help the CISO, uh, to help the technology or SOC operations team on uh, finding a bad configuration, a bad hygiene piece, and actually even getting to the point of automatically remediating that, remediating that because it generally can be uh, a basic problem that gets us the biggest issues. Um, Mark, you used a very... Um right phrase that you know that's where the industry partnerships come handy and uh, i am i'm very confident that um, you know cso's in isolation uh, with the participation from the industry um, can only do that much a job or half the job and that's where my next question uh, to perhaps the last question to you is that um, you know whatever we say and, and paint a picture about zero trust or the technologies that uh, OEMs are offering, service providers and partners are offering. Um, how does an organization like Google Cloud instill confidence among the CISOs that um, you know, partnering with you uh, may be beneficial 
for guarding the crown jewels uh, in a in a more or less perimeterless world. Thank you. That's that's a pretty important question. So I'll uh, I'll do my best to answer that one. Um, we make uh, you know uh, commitments to our customers that will process the data in the region they want. So if they're in India and we commit to the Delhi or Mumbai data centers, we're going to commit that the services with those terms will process that information. Transparency around that. The industry partnerships with the trusted security providers they have, like Palo Alto, is something that we've done really well with. So the Prisma uh, access story of uh, Google and Prisma access together, you know, something they are familiar with and know coming in. Uh, and we run a cloud IDS service powered by Power Alt Palo Alto, something that you've got confidence in with that capability. And, and certainly I'm biasing myself here towards one ISV partnership, which is very strong and important for us. But critically, the industry partnership with the technology providers that have kept organizations safe, continue to focus purely on doing that and then integrating with cloud service providers. These are the right technology partnerships that I see uh, my customers looking for in taking them on their multi-cloud journey and also helping them with the hybrid and the migration from where they are to where they want to be. They're not going to get there on day one. It is a journey and actually will never end. But traditional security providers growing with the you know, great technology acquisitions, moving into partnerships with CSPs, running as a service, reducing the complexity and effort of operating that. Uh, these are where I see um, the outcomes and as a provider, us meeting our commitments and openness, you know, openness to integration, openness to open source, uh, portability, these are key aspects. Well, that's very important and, and, and good that you brought it up that uh, you know, the partnerships between uh, two distinct organizations which bring um, very unique capabilities and can actually uh, be of, of, of benefit of a very different order to the, to the users. And you gave two very good examples, you know, Google and Prisma, uh, the cloud ideas powered by Palo Alto. I think these are very good examples that the, that the listeners should uh, take, uh, take as, as alternatives for themselves. So um, coming to you lastly, Josefa, uh, I began my question that, uh, you know, first question with you that there is a clutter in the market. So my last question is also uh, sort of similar, but it will, it will um, allow you to highlight, um, you know, how, how does Palo Alto Networks offer a better alternative to the ones that exist in the market today uh, to secure uh, the valuable assets from, from the highly sophisticated and automated attacks on cloud infrastructure? Yeah, Rahul, I, uh, thanks for this question. And you know me now for many years. Uh, I, I like these kind of uh, uh, volley, balls on, on a good volley, and I like to take it straight on and make it out of the park. So let me let me start with a statement that we are industry's only uh, comprehensive, uh, best-in-class cloud-native security platform. I'm going to repeat that because I'm going to break it down. Comprehensive, best-in-class cloud-native security platform. Comprehensive. I mean, the Prisma Cloud that we have solutions and, and, and uh, Mark mentioned about Prisma Access and stuff secures infrastructure, application, and data intelligence across you know some of the largest clouds uh, that our customers have brought in, including you know very very strong partnership from CSPs like uh, GCP, uh, leveraging a combination of the APIs and a unified agent framework, giving what the most important thing: unmatched visibility and protection. Right, so that's comprehensive, best in class. Prisma Cloud integrates uh, capabilities from the world's most innovative, uh, you know, we, the way we have built it inorganically. Some of the most innovative security startups, we got them built, uh, together at delivering some of the most enhanced platform uh, to provide some market leading functionalities across all our individual modules. You know, you, you know, Mark touched upon it, the CSPM side of it is the, the cloud workload protection, CIEM, the micro segmentation across, right? Uh, including uh, container security, threat protection, web application, API security. So security benefiting from some best in class protection. It's, it's second to none. They need to focus on the core and leave that to us. Cloud native, again, covering the entire full life cycle. Um, the way Prisma Cloud integrates with uh, any CI CD workflow to secure that cloud infrastructure and applications early in development, you know, scanning some of the IAC templates, container images, so, um, you know, serverless functions. I think we have a huge responsibility to unify this DevOps and Devs and SecOps to get into an integrated DevSecOps approach. Um, and finally, um, platform, security platform. I think, uh, as I said, 
um, you know, securing infra application data across a huge variety of hybrid and multi-cloud environment is one thing. But if you look at, I don't know if you have seen the Gartner's uh, innovation insight around around cloud security protection, and they come out with a very very clear uh, definition called as the cloud native application protection platform, a CNAP, right? Uh, and that's their uh, sort of uh, guidance and approach to successfully implementing uh, cloud native application security for enterprise using an integrated platform approach. And if you peel the onions, five things that specifies that is, you know, how do you, how do you have the artifact scanning, including containers and stuff, development artifact scanning, cloud security posture management, uh, infrastructure as a post scanning, cloud in, uh, infrastructure entitlement management, and the runtime cloud workload protection, CWPP, all of that, uh, being delivered in a single platform way, rather than, as you said, going for those each individual use cases, putting a different set of solution just to address that, and then ending up being a, a banded architecture trying to make everything work with each other and have some sort of visibility going. So we are the only ones probably who have a full, uh, I would say, complete mapping to that CNAP definition and give that one platform thing. So. I think that's where I think I, I would lead in terms of that statement. I got. I, I thought. I thought uh, we are just warming up, and the conversation when it started becoming uh, really very interesting. Um, uh, extremely sorry that I have to. Uh, I have to just just go for another closing remarks. And I, by the way, I like the conviction with which you underlined it twice, <laughs> and 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 that actually shows a lot of uh, you know a lot about the talks a lot about the leadership that Palo Alto um, has in the market. So quick one minute closing remarks from, from Mark and Josefa, both of you, uh, about how you see the future with Zero Trust. Starting with you, Mark. Thanks. Um, I think it's really important that we get through the hype cycle. The, the buzzwords need to go. Uh, we, we need to get through that and we need to understand what are the what is the roadmap you know, who has, has ever talked about the step plan uh, what for me is like you know where are you solving first user to system system to system uh, interactions let's let's start tackling piece by piece and get on the journey improve the posture of it overall our goal is to be you know the most trusted platform and trusted cloud to run your workload um, and we'll partner with industries uh, to make sure that the right practices of configuring it are applied to your, the environment to make it secure. So, uh, you know, Zero Trust is one of those and we'll work to make it more open. We're going to take context and we do from the, the industry to make better decision making around access, uh, integration in an open way with the BeyondCorp API. Uh, these are all areas that, you know, I think get on the journey, get past the buzzwords and, and uh, start improving uh, day by day. Uh, we all operate in security on a day by day basis. Uh, let's start moving forward. Well, absolutely. I mean, it has to, it has to get off uh, that zone of, uh, of, of buzzwords and hype cycles. And we need to get onto the journeys to understand and, and uh, you know, declutter ourselves from the jargon that we have amassed over the period of time. Uh, Josefa, last words from you. Yeah, I think uh, a, a few things uh, are standing out for me, right? Uh, and, and specifically, I'll pick on what Mark said. One, it's an evol ever evolutionary industry. I mean, there are there are absolutely no source of things that ever you applied yesterday would work tomorrow because the track landscape is changing, right? Uh, so that's that's number one. It's it's constantly evolving. The number two thing I think Mark also touched upon, and I really personally very much endorsed, is people have still not understood the real uh, meaning of shared responsibility when it comes to uh, you know, cloud uh, security and cloud native security. So fundamentally, I think I've seen customers expecting vendors like us to kind of align with them early, early in this in this journey when they are talking about adoption of cloud. And how do we become that trusted advisor and guide them in terms of these constructs and lead them towards putting something which is a very very formidable platform. As, as I think we all touched upon, right? Without a strong platform, if you put the right uh, things in the first place, uh, the whole thing will collapse. So, working early, I would say shift left engagement in our uh, in our interaction with, with the customers would really really help. Oh, excellent! I mean, uh, we are we are we are ending it on a very high and very positive note. And uh, you know, especially I would like to highlight to our listeners that I am talking to two. Uh, I mean, two stalwarts in the industry who belong to two pioneering organizations. 
and a uh, word of advice coming from both of them uh, is extremely useful and extremely uh, you know beneficial for for your journey uh, on on zero trust and and cloud native architecture so thank you mark and thanks josefa for your time that you spent uh, with me and with us uh very very valuable uh insights coming out of this uh, conversation i have I, i wish i had a little more time but um maybe the next time we'll have a slightly more uh, i mean longer conversation thank you so much thanks thanks rahul i think as usual you did a fantastic job in getting the most out of us and thanks mark for the collaboration thanks rahul uh, absolute pleasure to be uh, sharing about this topic um and uh, hazefa thank you very much for uh, being my partner on this <laughs> absolutely thank you Thank you.